Welcome all. My name is Dr. Sangram Patil. I work for Sammex School in Arundel, District Jalgaon in Maharashtra, and the chapter name is Periodic Classification of Elements. Learning goals of this chapter are to learn about elements and their classification. Newland's law of octaves, modern periodic table, to know about Dobrenier's triad and Mendeleev's periodic table. So let's look at the few questions given at the beginning of your chapter. What are the types of matter? What are the types of elements? What are the smallest particles of the matter called as? And what is the difference between the molecules of elements and compounds? Let's go to these questions <clears throat> one by one. So the first question is, what are the states, uh, types of the matter? And the four natural matter types are, which are the states of matter. These are solid, liquid, gases, and plasma. And there's a fifth state described recently, which is a man-made, and it's called Bose-Einstein condensates in a solid particle in solid the particles are packed tightly together so they don't move much whereas in liquids they have a freedom to move and in gases they are completely free to move around and these three uh, can be grouped under metals non-metals and inert gases when it comes to the types of elements what are the smallest particles of matter called as? The term used is quarks. These are the smallest particles of the matter. Previously, we used to think the smallest particles were electrons and protons and neutrons, <clears throat> which are the subatomic particles. But now we know quarks, they represent the smallest known subatomic particles. Now, if we look at the history, uh, around year 1800, only 30 elements were known to mankind. And the scientists were trying to discover more and more elements. Now, we know around 118 elements. So, as the elements were discovered, there were an attempts to classify them. And the initial attempt was to group them into metals and non-metals. And the third class of metalloids was added later on and the scientists with increasing knowledge and increasing number of elements developed a complex system of classifying the elements we're going to look into it now Doberiner's triad around 1817 a German scientist called Doberiner he suggested that properties of elements uh, were related to their atomic masses. So he made groups of three elements each having similar chemical properties and called them triads. He arranged the three elements in triad in an increasing order of atomic mass and showed that the atomic mass of middle element of the three was approximately equal to the mean of atomic masses of other two elements. However, all the known elements couldn't be classified into this system. Have a look at this table which classifies elements into different triads and he's tried to show that the atomic mass of the middle element is average approximately equal to the mean of the atomic masses of other two elements. Obviously this system had its own limitations. The next in line is <clears throat> Newland's law of octaves. John Newland was English scientist and he attempted to classify elements in a different way based on their relationship with atomic masses. Now he found that when elements are arranged in increasing order of atomic masses, the first and the eighth element will have similarities such as magnesium will show similarity with beryllium chlorine with fluorine similarly sodium will be similar to lithium in terms of properties so 
first and eighth will be same and this similarity observed was termed as law of octaves now we know in indian music system we have something called saptak and in that we have sa re ga ma pa dha ni so sa of basic saptak and sa of upper saptak they have similarity similarly in western notes music notes they have seven notes and they are do re mi fa so la ti so the first do will have similarity of the higher notes do and this is correlated in newland's law of octaves have a look at this table uh, this is 7 by 8 table with english musical notes at the top do re mi fa so la ti and the elements are grouped under all these seven notes uh, lots of limitations to this system which is newland's octaves uh, this uh, system puts all the known element of that time which were known to newland he's put all of them into 56 boxes and in some places he's put two elements together you can see cobalt and nickel are put under do and they are not similar to other elements in that box such as chlorine chlorine and all those things whereas iron is put in different areas in the under different note called t at the rightmost column and iron there is grouped with non-metallic elements like oxygen and sulfur whereas it should be with cobalt and nickel because it's a metallic element another limitation was that there's no place for newly discovered elements so this system wasn't perfect for classification of elements even at that time now let's learn something about mendeleev's periodic table which is a very important topic for you this is the main core of this chapter so who was mendeleev he was a russian scientist and his name was dmitry mendeleev he developed a periodic table for elements and that was in later part of 19th century mendeleev's periodic table is the most important stake in this classification systems uh, of elements Mendeleev considered the fundamental property of elements, the atomic mass, as the standard and arranged 63 elements which were known at that time. And he arranged all these elements in increasing order of their atomic masses. Then he converted this, this arrangement into a periodic table of elements. And he then divided these elements in accordance with their physical and chemical properties. Mendeleev then organized periodic table on the basis of chemical and physical properties of the element and these were the molecular formulae of the hydrides and oxides of elements, melting point, boiling point, density of an element, and their hydrides and oxides. Mendeleev found that elements with similar physical and chemical properties repeat after a definite interval and on that basis he stated a periodic law which is described as properties of elements are periodic function of their atomic masses. The vertical columns from above down in Mendeleev's periodic table are called groups whereas the horizontal rows from left to right are called periods. Now have a careful look at this table. It's given in your books as well. This describes eight vertical groups from above down and eight horizontal rows from left to right. Have a look at it. You can pause the video or have a look in your books. Now there has been a small change in the way 
these compounds the formulae are written the general molecular formula of a compound you can remember from the previous table it was r2o r2o3 whereas the number is written at the top of the letters whereas in modern system these numbers are written at the bottom you can see it in this slide little bit about the scientist Dimitri Mendeleev was a professor in St. Petersburg University in Russia. He made a separate card for every known element showing its atomic mass. He arranged the cards in accordance with the atomic masses and properties of the elements which resulted in the invention of the periodic table of elements. Now let's deal with these questions. There are some vacant places in Mendeleev's periodic table. In some of these places, the atomic masses are seen to be predicted. N list three of these predicted atomic masses along with their group and period. Now, Mendeleev published a periodic table of chemical elements in 1869 and that was based on properties that appeared uh, on regular basis on a periodic basis and when he proposed his table he noted few gaps in the table so he predicted that some of the elements were unknown to the world that time but they did exist so he created empty space for these elements in his table and you can see these elements in this diagram but in actual practice they turned out to be scandium gallium germanium and the atomic masses for these were 44 68 and 72 respectively now you have a task now find out where these elements are actually located located in modern periodic table scandium gallium and germanium you need to find it out let's look at second question here due to uncertainty in names of some of the elements a question mark is indicated before the symbol in mendeleev's periodic table what are such symbols again the previous question we have already answered this question he named his predicted elements as eka boron eka aluminium and eka silicon and he gave them symbols as e b e a and e s so what are the merits advantages positive points about mendeleev's periodic table students we know the science is progressive it keeps changing in terms of information there is a new information added every few years and there is a freedom freedom in science to revise the old inference by using more advanced techniques this characteristic of science are clearly seen if we look at the classification of the element system and that is true for even Mendeleev's periodic table while applying the law that the properties of elements are periodic function of their atomic masses to all the known elements Mendeleev arranged the elements with a thought that the information available till then was not the final and he predicted few empty spaces and label the names we know that as a result of this Mendeleev's periodic table demonstrates the following benefits merits atomic masses of some elements were revised so as to give them proper place in the periodic table in accordance with their properties for example previously 
determine atomic mass for beryllium was 14.09 but with the new table it was changed to correct value of 9.4 similarly beryllium was placed before boron second merit Mendeleev kept vacant places in the periodic table for elements not discovered till then three of these elements eka boron eka aluminium and eka silicon from the known neighbors and their atomic atomic masses were indicated by mendeleev look at this table which compares eka aluminium which was originally predicted by mendeleev <coughs> with gallium which is the actual element which was later found out look at their atomic masses density melting point family of chloride oxide and nature of oxide so mentally was able to predict quite closely have a look at this pause the video and have a look at this table or look into your book for details the next merit of Mendeleev's periodic table is that there was no place reserved for noble gases but when noble gases such as helium, neon and argon were discovered towards the end of 19th century he created the zero group without disturbing the original periodic table and it worked really well. It's a question here chlorine has two isotopes chlorine 35 and chlorine 37 their atomic masses are 35 and 37 respectively the chemical properties are same where should this be placed in Mendeleev's periodic table in the different places or in the same place now chlorine is a halogen and its place in periodic table is group 17 or period 3 uh, group is a vertical part and period is a horizontal part so chlorine is being a halogen molecule it's got a position second in group uh, having atomic number of 17 so even though the atomic masses are different its atomic number is 17 so it's the same position for both isotopes this is end of part 1. Look for part 2 on YouTube channel.